Welcome to the most in-depth Amazon FBA product research tutorial on YouTube. No other video on YouTube goes into the strategies and the depth which you'll find in this tutorial. And I know because I checked. So if you really wanna find a killer product to sell on Amazon and make your first 10, 100, 1 million dollars selling online, this is the video that you need to watch. You will actually find everything you need in one place, so pay attention. I use this exact strategy to launch a brand new product with a brand new Amazon store to its first $10,000 in 40 days with just one review. I'm not just gonna tell you the theory like most gurus, I'm gonna actually walk you through the entire process live. I've even created a checklist that you're gonna be able to download to follow along as well. We're gonna be going through everything from budgeting, identifying demand, identifying opportunity, product concepting, testing the concept, due diligence, and a whole tons more. I'm also gonna give you a huge number of free resources that you can take away today to help you learn to do this. We're talking cheat sheets, documents, spreadsheets, SOPs, you name it, I've got it for you. To actually allow you to learn this, this video is kind of split up into two sections. One where I'm gonna walk you through the entire process so that you understand why we're doing the things that we're doing and in what order to do them. And then I'm gonna do it start to finish so you can see the theory in practice. I know you're probably gonna wanna skip to where I'm just doing it, but I promise you, if you know why we're doing it, you will be much more successful in doing it yourself. So let's get started right now. The first thing you really need to understand is your budget and your research criteria. I see a lot of people go and do the research without doing this first and they end up wasting a ton of time because they find a product that they can't even afford or they haven't put money aside for marketing costs or company setup costs. So this is the first thing that you need to do. And if you're thinking, oh, I've got a rough idea, no. No, 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 you need to do it properly. To do all this, we'll be using this standard operating procedure. You'll see it on my screen now, and you'll be able to download this for free within the uh, Amazon seller community on school, link in the description. The purpose of this is to identify the key metrics that you'll use as the characteristics to find your product that you will then sell on Amazon. The first step is you need to have a budget. I have people DM me every single day that say they wanna start up on Amazon and I say, okay, cool, what's your budget? And they say, oh, you know, I've got enough or I've got some money or I've got a few thousand. That answer simply isn't good enough. If you go to any other business, let's say that you're going to start up a cafe in your local area and you say, I'm gonna start up a cafe and let's say the bank asks you, okay, cool, how much money have you got to do this? And you go, oh, I've, I've got enough. Then they're not gonna help you. They're not gonna give you a loan because you need to have a budget to know what your boundaries are. If your budget is 200,000, your decision-making ability is very different to having 2,000. The other big issue is when you have low startup capital, so we're talking like 2,000, 3,000 pounds, you might look at products that you can afford within two to 3,000 pounds, but you haven't adjusted for any of your startup costs, any of your tools, any of your resources, any help, any support, any education. So that means that you can spend that money on your stock, but you have no money for anything else. And whilst it's great to spend as much money as you can on stock, because that's the thing that's gonna make you money in return, if you don't have money to fuel the actual success of the business, it's not gonna be successful. You're probably thinking then, well, what's, what's a good amount to start up with? That is like asking how long is a piece of string, but let me give you some examples of lengths of string so you can have an idea. If you had between five to 10,000 pounds, that's gonna give you a good amount of money to buy some stock. So you might spend two, three, 4,000 pounds on your actual stock. And then you've got money for your marketing, your tools, your resources, your company formation, everything that you need to get to actually get set up. And then you also have money left over either for reordering stock or for if you wanna adapt and change as you go. Let's say that you had 50,000 pounds to start this business. You might be thinking, well, that means that I can just spend 20, 30, 40 grand on stock initially. And whilst yes, you could, I actually wouldn't advise doing that. If this is your first time launching a product on Amazon or your first time creating a brand, I certainly wouldn't spend that much money upfront because at the end of the day, this is a risk and you want to be able to validate products before you go completely all in on them. If your budget is larger, 50, 100,000 pounds, then still limit that first stock ordering to let's say you know five to ten to fifteen thousand. If you're the person with that sort of budget and you don't have a system, education, a support system around you, you will hands down make some ginormous mistakes, which will cost you even more money. So it's so important that if that's your budget, you really, really get the help. If you've got low startup capital, it doesn't mean that that's all the money that you can use. There's tons of financial products out there that will help you stretch your money a little bit further. You just need to be aware of them and be literate in the different options available. Of course, in the Amazon seller community, 
I've got resources for this for free. It's not as simple as just getting a loan. There's so many things that you can do to get more money. You just need to be aware of those systems. So step number one is you need to work out how much money you have to dedicate towards this business. So before you start even looking at products, you're thinking about branding, how much money have you got? So you want to look at this in two ways. How much money do I have on hand right now? And how much can I have in three, six, nine months time? Because when you're starting up, yes, you will need some initial money to get started. That is setting up your company. That's getting samples. That's using things like Helium 10 and product opinion and resources and tools. But you won't actually spend the bulk of your money until you place a deposit on your stock which is normally 30 percent deposit and then 20 25 days after that when your manufacturing is complete you'll pay the 70 percent down payment and then you'll pay your freight forwarder when they invoice you so the money that you invest into the business for the initial stock order is spread out over quite a few months that means that if you know that you've got money coming in from a house sale or from inheritance or something like that and you know it's going to be three months it doesn't mean that you need to wait three months to get started you can do a ton of work in fact the majority majority of the work before you've ever bought your stock. This is one of the big things that we do different in the Seller Pro Academy uh, and what I'm gonna actually show you today is the actual process behind validating the product before you've even ordered it. The first thing is to set aside some money for your startup costs. These are things like actually setting up your company, which is gonna be different depending on if you're in the UK or the US or Germany, the costs are gonna be different for that. If you're with business partners or investors, then you may wanna have contracts written up by you know, a corporate solicitor. Those things are gonna cost money. So you just put that money aside first of all. You then want to put money aside for a few months of tools like Helium 10 and Product Opinion. These are going to be critical resources and tools that you'll use to actually find a product and validate its success before launching. You need to make sure you can have enough money for both of those things. You're also going to pre-allocate some money for your marketing. So I'm talking about your images, I'm talking about your logos, your branding, your product packaging, and everything to do with how your product looks and feels. Whilst the design of your packaging and everything like that, really it should be part of your product cost. Because you do it once at the start, we really want to put it into the startup fund. And that's so we know that that money is put aside because if you think to yourself, oh, well, I actually want to go for this product, I'm going to spend a little bit more on the product and I won't spend as much on the design work, then this is where you can make some big mistakes because the design work is why your product is successful. The marketing is so, so important. So you should never compromise the quality of that. And just like if you're doing renovation, add some slippage. So if it's gonna cost you 2,000 pounds, add on 15%. So add on another 300 pounds as just some extra money, just in case. And then all you're gonna do is calculate the remaining figure. So if you have 10,000 pounds to start, you've put aside 2,300 pounds for your startup costs, what does that leave you with? 7,700 pounds or whatever currency you're working with. If that was about 7,000 pounds, you might think, right, well, I'll use half of that for my initial stock ordering and I wanna save half of it for a later date or my just in case fund. So now our budget for our initial order is three and a half thousand. We can then assume that RRP of the product selling on Amazon is about four to five times the cost of goods. That gives us a ballpark of where we can look. For example, if the product landed in the country that it's selling is three pounds or three dollars, you'd estimate that that's gonna sell on Amazon anywhere between 13 and 15 pounds. Of course, it can be higher, it can be lower, it could be bang on the money, but for this stage of just working out roughly how many units you can afford, just use this simple multiplier. Now we have a budget, we can look at how many units we can afford. And you're not gonna just work out, I'm gonna order 300 units. Work out 300 units, 500 units, 250 units. So you can start to understand how these costs affect the number of units that you can afford. For example, if you had 3,000 remaining, you could buy 500 units at six pounds landed or 700 units at 428 landed. Or you could have 500 units at three pounds landed and then have even more leftover capital for 500 more units on a reorder. You just wanna create a variety of these and just have them on hand on a sticky note or have them on a notes document just so you can refer back to it really easily and really quickly. So when you're researching your products and you see a product that sells for 14 pounds and most of the sellers are doing 500 units a month, you know, okay, I could actually afford to do that product because that's within my boundaries. You know that you have enough money to actually order enough stock to make money in that market. And simply the better understanding that you have at this level, the easier it gets to identify the right 
right sorts of products for you in the next few steps. Now you've got a budget, you can actually start looking for products. Now at this stage, you might think to yourself, right, I'm gonna go start up my business. I'm gonna go do all that good, sort of good stuff. But actually you don't need to do it just yet. You can find a product without setting up a company and you can set up a company in the background. Let's move on to the next section, identifying demand. A lot of the stuff I'm gonna tell you right now is actually better understood in practice. So I'm gonna give you the overview right now, but then later on when I'm doing this, it's gonna make a lot more sense because I'll be walking through each of these strategies. Okay. However, it's important you know the process before you start doing it so you know why you're doing it. What you really need to be looking at is not finding a product with high demand and low competition, which is what everyone tells you to do. Don't do that because competition does not dictate the success of a product or lack of competition doesn't dictate the success. What does dictate the success is, is there demand for the product? First of all, are people buying the product, which is why we're identifying demand. And then the next thing is, is there an opportunity within the market, which is why the next section we're looking at is identifying opportunity. These are the only two things you need. Is there demand and is there an opportunity and can you fill that opportunity, fill that blank space? If the answer is yes, then potentially you have a successful product on your hands. If the answer is no, it doesn't matter if there's sellers with five reviews. This is the strategy that we've been using for years and it's working very, very well. The other problem is if you see videos where they're looking at the number of reviews as the indicator of success, how many people do you think are doing that as well? They search for the same products that you're looking at with the same sorts of criteria, and then they find the same sorts of products, and then they launch those products, and what happens is that all of these newbies are coming into the market, they're doing the product because it has low competition or low reviews, and then a ton of people flood the market, they drop the price because they don't know how to run a business, and you end up thinking, oh, I wish I hadn't have done that. I wish I put more effort into finding the opportunity. And I'm not saying don't look at the reviews. The reviews are important. I'm saying the number of reviews is not the indicator of success or failure. It's the quality of the those where you can find the opportunity to stand out. Just like any business, Amazon FBA and private labeling is not different to any other business. If I had an accountancy and all of the accountancy firms in my local area had tons of Google reviews, but I saw an opportunity where they're not serving their clients as best they could, or I had a particular niche or a particular way of doing it, it doesn't mean that I wouldn't start up because they have reviews. I would be looking at the reviews and finding out why people love them and why people hate them. And then I can use that as ammunition to create my offer. That is how reviews need to be leveraged. Later on, I'm going to show you these three strategies. So the Helium 10 black box, uh, the best seller strategy and the seller store strategies. I find these to be the easiest to use and the quickest to use, but ultimately I actually don't care how I, how I find products. It doesn't actually matter. The point is that you find one with demand. Demand comes down to two things. First of all, search volume. Are people actively searching for that product or have a problem that they're searching to resolve? And are there people already making money from this product. If you come up with this idea of this incredible product, everyone's gonna love it, but no one's searching for it and no one's buying it, then you don't have any demand for your business and it's gonna be very hard to acquire a customer. However, if you know that people are searching for it and buying it, that's a very good place to be because all you need to do is take a very small percentage of those sales and you can make a successful business out of it. So whilst you might see, oh, this incredible hack for a Helium 10 black box or the X-ray tool, or there's this amazing new product research technique out there, it doesn't actually matter. Of course, you can use them, you can try them out, but there's no one that's going to be way better than the other. I've had products where I've just gone on Amazon, I've bought them because I wanted them, and then realize that they're really good opportunities. You can be talking to a friend about something they purchased yesterday, or you can be in a shop and you see something on the shelf. Product research doesn't need to be this super boring way of scrolling through results. The important thing is you just find products with demand. That's the initial stage. So really don't get bogged down within the best research strategy for 2024 and whatever. Just find products with demand. You're going to need a software like Helium 10. There's other ones out there like Jungle Scout. I've just used Helium 10 now for quite a few years, pretty exclusively. Between them and Jungle Scout, whichever one you choose uh, you're going to be in good hands basically so those strategies we're going to look at when i actually do the live demo once you start identifying products you just need to make sure that they fall within your budgeting requirements they are search volumes which i'll show you how to do and to make sure that there's not any really bizarre trends or seasonality that you're not initially aware of of course if you're selling christmas trees 
most of them sell at Christmas. And at this stage, really, it's a disqualification game. You're looking for reasons to disqualify a product initially. And that's because the next stage when you identify opportunity takes a little bit longer. So you don't want to spend a ton of time identifying the opportunity within the market if there's actually a pretty good reason why you shouldn't do this initially. Like, for example, it's heavily seasonal and you're a beginner that's never done a product before. There's also a really cool tip that I will show you, but I didn't actually put it on this checklist, and it's finding something called the opportunity ladder. Depending on what your goals are, you really want to find a product that has kind of three levels of opportunity and a way to ascend it. So when you're looking at the search results, when you're looking at how much people are making and the demand in the market, you should see a split of people at the bottom where they're making, you know, maybe um, a few thousand per month. So these might be beginners, they might be sellers that aren't doing it very well, but the bulk amount of people are within the areas where you want to actually operate. Let's say that's 10 to 15,000 per month. And you think, right, cool, I can afford that. That's where I want to be. That revenue is going to tick all the boxes for me and I'm happy to do that. You want the majority of your sellers in that place, but then there's a few people at the top which will be doing really well. They might be doing 40, 50,000 in comparison to the other people at, you know, 15 or so. And this means that when you launch your product, you're not going to go straight to the top because when you're when you're a beginner, you're not just going to go straight to the top. It's just not going to happen like that. Once you're more established and you know how to do launches, you can put a little bit more money behind it, then that is actually possible. But for most people, that's not going to happen straight away. You want to see this ability to ascend up the ladder. So you can start in that, you know, the lower middle of the pack as you gain more reviews and you gain better SEO and you get better at PPC and you optimize your listing, you start to head up. And let's say over two years, you can try and hit the people right at the top and start taking their sales until eventually you become one of the people at the top. This is a process that can take a while, but if you can see the opportunity for growth, you can see the opportunity to ascend up that ladder. And that's a really good place to look. Let's talk about search volumes really quickly. Some people say you need to find search volumes where people are searching 5,000 uh, searches per month or 10,000 or 2,000 or 7,000. And ultimately there's no one size fits all because let's say there's 2,000 searches, but the product price is quite high, so it doesn't require as many people to buy to make a lot of money, then that could be a good opportunity. If there's 50,000 searches, but there's a massive opportunity within the marketing and the branding and the product, then that also could be a really good opportunity. The number of searches isn't as important. The really important metric is there's searches and there's sales. Some products might have multiple search terms so that maybe one of them's got 2,000 searches per month, another one's got 5,000, another one's got 3,000, but together they actually add up to a significant amount of demand from a search perspective. At this stage, you just want to be able to find the broadest keyword for that product, but also identify some of the more niche keyword search terms. For example, if you were selling a dog lead, retractable dog lead, you would want to know the search volume for that product if you then wanted to do a retractable dog lead. There is, however, a limit, of course. If there's under 1,000 searches for your main keyword, I would stay away from that personally. Unless you're not looking to make much money, then I would stay away from it. You do want to make sure there's a few thousand searches per month across either one keyword or multiple keywords. Once you start looking into the tens of thousands of searches per month, that's when you're going to find more competition in terms of the number of sellers. And a lot of people might say, oh, that's too much. But if you find an opportunity, they can be fantastic markets to go into. If you're just starting out doing this for the first time, then I would stay away from any trends or seasonal products. And there's a few reasons for this. The first reason is that your timeline won't be your timeline. If you think I, I want to be selling for Christmas because this is a Christmas product and you're starting, for example, in September, it's not going to happen, right? You're not going to be able to move fast enough because you have to learn, you have to do things, you're probably going to make some mistakes, you need to test your products, you're not going to have enough time to do that. Once you've done a few products, you're going to understand the time commitment that's needed upfront to get the product on Amazon. At that point, then hey, look, if you want to do a seasonal product or a trending product, then go ahead and do it because you've got the experience to know how how to do it in the timeline that's necessary. But if you're starting out, I really would stick away from that. The second reason is ordering the wrong amount of stock. If you're a beginner, you're gonna probably order either not enough stock or too much stock. If you've got a seasonal product and you've got too much stock for summer, for example, you're not gonna be able to shift them until the next year. That's gonna cause a problem because you're gonna to have to store them somewhere. You may be paying for storage and that could eat all of your profit away because you didn't sell enough products. But if you're an existing seller, then this isn't as much of a problem because you understand. For example, if you want to do 
products for Mother's Day, for Father's Day, for Valentine's Day, for Halloween, for whatever, then that could be a great way to just add some additional income throughout the year. But certainly a warning for beginners, um, just don't even consider it. When I'm talking about reasons for disqualification, here's the sorts of things I'm looking for. Is the product particularly dangerous? Now, if a product is sold on Amazon, then it will be okay to sell on Amazon. However, when you're starting out and you're looking at dangerous products, so for example, uh, knives or anything that could really cause harm to someone if they misuse it or they slip or, or whatever, the amount of risk that you're giving yourself is quite high because you've never done it before. You've never worked with a supplier. You've maybe never done any due diligence. You've never done some quality control on a product. You've never had insurance for a product. There's so many things you haven't done going into a really dangerous product or a product that could be really harmful. It just increases your risk a little bit more. And at this stage, you want to minimize that risk as much as possible. I'm not saying don't do them ever. I'm just saying as a first product, probably best to stay away from them. If you have a lower budget, then you really just want to get a product under your belt and get it launched and get it going. If you have significantly more investment than these more dangerous and more um, concerning products, they are possible for you to do because you'll be able to afford the due diligence, you'll be able to afford the testing and the compliance that will be required to have these products that are a little bit more dangerous. And when I say dangerous, sometimes I'm meaning like, say it was a topical cream or something like that. Well, that needs to go through testing. And it doesn't have to be knives. Let's say it was something ingestible or some sort of cream or face wash or something something like that, that has to have a different level of due diligence that has to go through a different regulatory compliance check. And all of those things cost money, you might spend thousands on actually testing different batches. So as a beginner with only £5,000 or $5,000, you're just not going to have the ability to do that. Whereas someone with 50,000 definitely does. So if you have a product that's within your price range, but it's super complex, or maybe it's dangerous, or it will have all of these compliance issues, then as a starting product, maybe you won't have enough money for it. However, later on in the future, maybe you will. Other things we're looking for is any intellectual property. Now, I'm not going to be doing a deep dive at this point into due diligence. There is a section really for this um, towards the end, but you just want to make sure that if you're looking at who and you think, oh, this Dyson idea, like of all these cyclones, that looks really cool. I wonder if I could do something similar. Probably gonna be protected in some way. Therefore, you can disqualify that quite simply. So this can be a quick Google search just to make sure that you're not stepping on anyone's toes at this initial stage. Doing a little bit of this now just means that you're not gonna waste any time later on. So as I said, we're gonna dive into this uh, later on in this video and I'll actually show you this in practice. The next thing we're doing is identifying the opportunity. This next part is where you make your money. This is very important important to listen to. This is about identifying the opportunity within the market. I've put this into six different categories, which we're going to go through, and I'll show you this later on as well. But the absolute priority for this, from what I found over the years, from helping thousands of people do this, from helping my clients make tens upon tens upon tens of millions selling on Amazon, your hero image is the most important element of any product. I will die on this hill. I believe this one image can be responsible for the entirety of your success or failure of your Amazon business. And I actually call this the 4% principle. If you know the 80-20 rule, the 80% of your output comes from 20% of your input. Well, what's the 20% of Amazon? It's your images. You might think, oh, it's your product, but if you have a great product marketed really badly, you're not really gonna sell very much. If you have a okay product marketed really well, then you're gonna make money. Your images are responsible for the majority of your success. I've helped companies turn around their entire business by changing six images. I took a gaming company from doing five, $6,000 per month on Amazon, changed their images, and the next month we did $242,000. Their conversion rate went from 2% to 20%, and that was just by changing the images, nothing else, nothing with the price, with the offer, with the title, with the SEO, it was just the images. So if your images are responsible for 80% of your success, What's the 80-20 rule of your images? Well, that's your hero image, your first image. That is responsible for 80% of the effectiveness of your images, which therefore means that 4% of your entire business is responsible for 64% of the results, hence the 4% principle. That's why what you're gonna see through today is I put a ginormous amount of effort into one image, finding the opportunity within that image from other sellers and creating that one image because I know that it leads to the vast majority majority of your results. If you take any lesson from this entire video, it is this. Put the vast majority of your effort into one image and you will be rewarded. 
you need to understand that attention is a limited resource. People are doing other things. They're on their computer, they're, their kids are running around, they're driving, they're at work, they're on the toilet, they're doing other stuff. So when they pick up their phone or they go on their computer to go on Amazon, they just wanna buy the product, right? They just wanna research it and buy it as quick as possible because they got other shit going on in their lives. The absolute first thing I look for is an opportunity to stand out and get that attention from the customer. I need to be able to get attention. I can't get a click, I can't get a sale unless I get attention. And and that can just be when someone looks at your listing like this, they go, oh, they just look at it. That's all you're looking to do. You just need a look in. This becomes so important when you're running PPC and advertising, because if you can't get attention, you can't get a click. If you can't get a click, you can't get a sale. If you can't get a sale, you can't get a review. If you can't get a review, you don't get a BSR bump. If you don't get a BSR bump, you don't gain in rankings. If you don't gain in rankings, you don't make more organic sales, which means you don't make as much money. And it's something that will keep going around and round and round and round. The bottleneck for an Amazon business is your click through rate, which is how many people see your listing, see your product versus click on your product. If you have two examples, a hundred people see your product and half a percent of people click through. Well, that's half a person that clicks through to your listing, right? Not, not very many. If you have a click through rate of 1%, you have one person click through. Now that might not sound like a big change, but once you multiply this by having thousands of people see your product and it's hundreds of clicks versus many hundreds of clicks or thousands of clicks, it makes a very big difference, right? Because the more people you funnel into your listing, into your product, the more people that will buy your products. Now, conversion rate is another thing that we wanna increase, but it starts with the click-through rate and that starts with your hero image. So I'm gonna show you how I do this. I'll show you some cool tips with ChatGPT that you can use and I'll show you how you can actually build your hero image and build the opportunity within that market on this video. While you're looking at images, you can look at the carousel of images. So they're the ones you scroll for to find any key opportunities there as well. Now, when I'm actually looking at the opportunity within the carousel images, then I won't put as much effort into that as than the hero image, because if someone doesn't click my listing, then they're never even gonna see my images. So I, I don't really worry as much at this stage. I just want to find out, are there people in the market that are not serving customers correctly? They're not answering the questions correctly. They're not communicating with clarity consistently so they can convert customers or convert people into customers. What I often find with this is that people way overcomplicate their images. They add way too much text. It's super complex. This is what I think about when I think about images. There's a book called Insanely Simple and it talks about a conversation or a, a meeting between a marketing agency that worked for Apple and Steve Jobs. And there was a 30 second ad placement to talk about the Macintosh. Steve Jobs wanted like six or seven different features shown on this reel. And the marketing agency only wanted to share one. And they argued about this for quite a period of time until the guy, Ken, he did this. He took pages and he scrunched them up into balls and he then threw them at Steve Jobs and said, catch. Steve didn't catch any and Ken said, that's a bad ad. He then took one ball and said, catch. He threw it to Steve Jobs. He caught it and Ken said, that's a good ad. The point here is that the more you try and show people, the less they actually see. We know that it takes about one second to read three words. We know that also a picture tells a thousand words. So it makes sense that when you do your Amazon imagery, you try and communicate with imagery rather than text. Showing something to be sturdy is much better than saying it's sturdy. Showing something working is better than saying that it works. So you can look for these opportunities at this initial stage to go, right, I know all these people, they're not communicating all of these features as best they could and I could do a better job. Then looking for opportunity in price is really good. If you see prices low and high, it's a really good thing. If all the prices are $15.99 and they're all around that level, it potentially could be hard to stand up because there could be a really big price going on. If you see some people at the lower price, a lot of people in the middle, some people higher, you know that there's customers that are buying the cheap ones, there's customers in the middle of the road, and there's people buying the, the more expensive options. This can be really good for you because you could then position yourself as one of the more expensive options. And using badge hacking and price hacking, you could do lots of things to make your offer look more desirable here. Branding is super important and looking for a way to stand out within your brand is so critical at this stage. If you can see that all the brands are some Chinese 
brand that doesn't really make any sense or you go on their listing and you can clearly see that it's all photoshopped nonsense you know that there's a way to stand out with your branding so that you look trustworthy people buy from brands they know like and trust and whilst they might not know you right now you can certainly build up that like factor and that trust factor just within your imagery on amazon the words that you use the voice of your brand the way it looks, the packaging, all these things add together to build trust with your customer because they need to know when they buy the product, they can trust that it's going to work and the company is actually a good company. All of that can be created very, very easily. Now you'd be surprised that I'm only now talking about the product and yes, finding an opportunity within the product is, is good, but I've seen so many times that it's not a fluke, that you can take the same product as everyone else, not even the best one, and make it better than everyone else's just through your imagery, your marketing and your branding. Most people think you need the bundle with this, that, and the other. And whilst, yeah, that's cool, if it's good for the customer and if it makes sense for the customer, absolutely do it. But it's not the reason why people buy your product. People buy your product, one, because they've seen your product, and two, they think that it's gonna work for them. The price isn't as important as you think, and actually the product isn't as important as you think. I know it sounds really weird to say, but you can have two identical products. They're marketed in different ways. The branding on one of them is really good. The branding on the other one's pretty average this one will do better even though it's the exact same product people will feel a different way about it because of the branding and because of the marketing i'll show you how to find the opportunity within the product but don't be deterred that it's one of the last things on the list yes of course it's very important it's your actual product you need to make sure it's good enough so that you get good reviews and you can continue to scale it but before you go down a rabbit hole with the product you need to make sure that you can actually market the product so you can stand out get the clicks and get people onto your listing we're then going to do something called a search simulation poll now this is something you probably haven't heard of before this is a critical part of the product research journey and the way it works is you've got the product that you are investigating you can then do a search simulation poll which basically means that you're paying a company that have a ton of people a uh, ton of people on their books you take your search term let's say it's retractable dog lead and what you'll do is you'll go to this polling company and they will then get people to go to that Amazon page, right? You can also change it to make it look a little bit different if you want to and give their feedback on which products they will choose and why. This can be done as a poll with like people writing the answers, but this also can be done on video where you're actually watching people shop on their computer. The insights that you get from that are so valuable, they can dictate how you actually create your product. Because if everyone is saying, oh, I love the sleek design of this one and you see this again and again and again and again, hey, sleek design is is really important. I need to make sure my product has this sleek design. Or if the customers are saying, I like this one because it comes with a case, right? Let's say all of them come with a case. They could have clicked on any of them and they all have cases, but only these three are showing it in their hero image. So I know that first of all, I need to have a case. Second of all, I need to put it on my hero image. Third of all, it needs to stand out against the other cases. This then helps you on the next stage of then concepting what your product is gonna look like. I'm very much looking forward to showing you this section. When I do this live shortly, I'm gonna actually show you the search simulation polls and the results that you get as well. Once you've gone through all of this, you're gonna have a very good understanding about where the opportunity is within this market, how you're gonna do it, what customers think, and then that goes into your next stage of product concepting. This is what I need to do. These are all the things that are important. So therefore my product should be bang, 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 bang. What would it look like? What would it feel like? What does my branding feel like? Let's concept that idea. Let's go back and retest it to see how it fares against competitors. And then you can keep going around doing this process of the opportunity, the concepting, the testing, and then essentially you're just refining that process of you have your opportunity, you know what you need to do, you concept an idea, you test it, you refine that concept until you're happy that you will be able to stand out, you will have one of the best products on the market, you will do it in a very, very convincing way, and you will be the most successful product. All of this can be validated through data rather than thinking, oh, I wonder if this is going to work, or maybe all these reviews say that uh, P customers do love this. You need to validate that theory and what I'm going to show you today is exactly how to do that. Let's move on to product concepting. 
This is one of my favorite parts of doing this because you already know now what you need to do. You can now play around with concepting what that actually looks like. I use something called Mid Journey, which is an AI tool to come up with concepts. I then take that concept and I draft up a hero image. Now this is really important. I'm not looking at the bells and whistles of the product and the instruction manual and what it's gonna be inside. I'm just thinking, what is it gonna look like for the hero image? And all I'm then gonna do is define what the pricing and the offer should be compared to the other sellers in the market. This is going to give me an image and an offer. These are the things that we're then going to test within the product concept testing. Notice that I'm not going super into depth with this. I'm just thinking, can I stand out? Can I get a click? If I can get clicks, all of the rest of the work is 100% doable. But if I can't get clicks, I can't get attention. It doesn't matter how much effort I put into the video on my listing. If I can't get a click, no one's going to see it. We're then going to do another search simulation poll to validate if my hero image does actually work better than the competition. And this process here of concepting and testing is just going to repeat until we are happy, which again is exactly what we're going to do. Right, here we are inside of my computer. So for the next, however long this is going to take, I'm going to take you through this entire process of identifying the demand, identifying the opportunity. We're going to come up with a product concept. Uh, we're going to test that concept and then just make sure that we've done any uh, uh, due diligence. So with the demand, as I said earlier, um, I actually don't care how you find products. The point is that they have demand. So quite often people use um, Helium 10's black box. So Helium 10, they're part of the furniture when it comes to um, selling on Amazon software. And there's two real things that you'll use. So black box you may use, it's not my preference personally. I'll just show you how to use it so you can have an idea. Um, but I, I would say too many people focus way too much on this software. Whereas I like using something else, which I'll talk about in a second. And the further two strategies on this list are, are, are definitely my favorite ones to use. But just to give you an idea, what you can do is just search by category. So let's say if we choose baby products, um, we can look at how many reviews people have. I'm going to leave that blank. We can look at the bestseller uh, rating. We can look at shipping size. So maybe I only want small standard products. Uh, maybe the sales price maximum I want to be like $20 sorry, maybe between like 17 and, and $20. Um, I can look at the monthly revenue. So maybe the minimum revenue I want is like 5,000 or so. And again, you can change a lot of these metrics. Now the problem comes with when you press search. Now you can get super specific with the search criteria, but what I find is that people that do this strategy, they end up just searching on here forever and forever and forever. They go and look at a product and they never actually move forward within product research. So whilst you can get some ideas, like if we look at these search results, yes, they meet our criteria, but like it doesn't tell me anything about the opportunity within the market. I'm not on Amazon. It would be better, say for example, if Helium 10 made this look like Amazon, I think then it could be quite cool to show you, you click on one, you see the competitors straight away. Helium 10, you get that, like you get that for free. Um, but this is, you know, it's, I can look here, the monthly revenue of this seller, they're doing 21,000 per month. It's 17 pound products. I can open it up in Amazon and I can, I can have a look at the product. So it's a, um, a mat for, it's actually quite useful to be honest. I could do with this, <laughs> um, a mat for under the high chair. Okay. So yeah, hey, look, it's fantastic. We can then go uh, map for under high chair as probably the best search term. And I would just search it in all categories, all departments. And we can see lots of sellers doing the same thing. Um, what we would then go up to once this loads is the Chrome extension, which is the tool that you will use the most. And in particular, it's the X-Ray tool just here. So once you tap X-Ray, then it will basically pull out all the information from those listings in terms of the titles, the uh, ASIN, the brand, the price, the sales, revenue, uh, the number of reviews. Um, even if we go right over to the right over here, uh, we can sometimes see the creation date. So if we see that there's some sellers doing like quite well and they only launched uh, like for example, January, 2020, 2024. So not that long ago, we can see here, oh, they're only doing 2,700 per month. So maybe that's not a good example. Um, these ones here, it's probably the same company. Let's just double check. Yep, it's the same company. 
uh, one in late 2023. So we can see here they're doing about 4,000. So these are newer sellers and they're not doing, you know, maybe as well, this 100K seller. So if you look for this mat under high chair, we can see there's a few different sellers. <clears throat> Some of them, uh, they don't particularly look very good, but immediately, right, immediately, I'm looking at the next section, identify opportunity. I'm looking at the hero image. So this is why you needed to know this stuff all in one go, first of all, before we did it, because I'm identifying demand. I'm also looking at the opportunity at the same time, because quite quickly we can see if there's an opportunity within the hero image. For example, product facing left, facing left, facing left, facing left, facing left, or the high chair rather. This one, face on, face on, left, left, left left, right, can't really see it, left, left. So immediately, uh, most of the high chairs are facing left. One of them has a baby, two of them have a baby, three, four, five. And the rest of these we're not really gonna worry about because they're too far down. So I potentially would be thinking in my head at this moment with Hero Image, right, well, we know that we do want a high chair in it because we need to. Sh this is a product we kind of need to show in use and I should have the, the high chair facing right, I should have a baby in it, and potentially I would even have some food there as well, uh, maybe not on the actual mat itself. Then all of these mats, they're kind of uh, at, at an angle, but facing directly on. Is there an opportunity to stand it out a little bit sideways like this? Potentially, it's something that we can investigate. And then i am be thinking about the colors used. So what colors do people like? And personally, as someone with a 11 month old baby, um, I wouldn't want this in my kitchen, in my dining room, because I mean, it's, it, it's very childlike. I personally would want something that blends in with my aesthetic of my house. Um, look, and I'm not the, I'm only one person. So my opinion actually doesn't really matter, but this is something I'd be thinking about when I'm trying to find the opportunity here. So. When we get onto the search simulation, and this is, by the way, this is the first product we found using black box. I, I don't necessarily think this is the product that we're gonna go with, but to give you an idea of this thought process as, as it's happening in real life, this is what I'd be thinking, okay? If I click on one of these, right? So I'm gonna click on um, this one here, and I'm just gonna open up that up in a separate tab because I just wanna investigate a little bit further. Again, I'm thinking, do I disqualify this? Um, my, one of my concerns have is on the, the size and weight of the product. So if I have you know $3,000 um, or so to launch this product, will I have enough money to be able to afford the shipping and all that sort of stuff? So what I can do is go down and just look at the, um, the size there and then the product dimensions. Do we have packaging dimensions here? This doesn't actually show packaging dimensions. Sometimes you, you will see that, um, but with this, um, we're not able to see it. So it's 51 inches. So I can, I can think about how that's gonna be um, packaged. I would go to the supplier and I would ask them that because I wanna know the size of this. So for, for fabric layer, I'm immediately thinking uh, who, who gives a shit, right? About four layer unique fabric no one cares um, people care about it in use um, so this is also a little bit frustrating as well that looks bigger than it looks there so as a customer i would automatically feel a little bit misled at this point and i would lose trust in this product now they're doing well so potentially there's a way where you can stand out by having more accurate descriptions of the product they've got a lifestyle photo that looks uh it, it does look fake they need so basically when you're doing photoshop you need to make sure the shadowing looks right i think it's nice to have this uh, it looks very good it's you know in in an environment where it's going to be used maybe uh the kitchen needs to be a little bit more messy <clears throat> uh, make messy cleanups a breeze so this is just awful my, I mean, that's not what mess looks like. So if you have a baby or a child or a toddler, you know that the banana ain't looking like that. It's smushed up, it's everywhere. You got like yogurt all over the place. Make it look real. So if I was doing this product, immediately I'm thinking, cool, there's an opportunity to actually make this look real. And it's not necessarily about protecting your floor. Like maybe if you have carpet, yes, in which case I would have a separate image that is is showing this on carpeted floor, like in a lounge or something like that. Um, and the messy cleanups, a breeze, I would make that something else. 
into a whole separate image. So there's two separate things going on there and I would wanna uh, approach them differently with marketing. Easy wipes clean, obviously, <laughs> uh, it doesn't even make sense, but we know what it means. Um, again, I would be thinking what sort of like cloth would I be using? Uh, what would be the thing that's being wiped up? And trying to show that a bit better. That like, just doesn't look very nice, especially like the color or all that. It just doesn't look that nice. Um, so we can use it for art time, high chair eating, a tablecloth that's so interesting outdoors. Ultimately, are people using it in these multiple ways? That's something that I'd want to find out because although you're saying, hey, it could be used for all these things, if people are only using it for a high chair, is there really any point using it to saying it could be used as a tablecloth or outdoors? If someone's going to you know, feed their child three times a day, if not more, it's going to stay in the same damn place. Someone's not going to keep picking up and moving it. And the other thing I'd be thinking about immediately for this is... It mentioned that it's uh, machine wash washable. So I would certainly be having a deal on selecting two. So if we can see here, uh, save 5% on two items. Okay, so I, okay, there's different products within their store. So hopefully uh, we can get two of the same product. I would, I would definitely have a deal for two of the same product or maybe even three of the same product. If I think about bibs and that sort of stuff, um, you need multiple bibs. And, and the price for this, it seems really cheap. Uh, I would need to see the product and, and see if it's good, but potentially there's a way to have um, a nicer looking one. Maybe you could put the price up a little bit. For example, I've got a mat uh, in my house at the moment. It's like a hundred and something pounds and it's just a damn mat. Um, people, people pay sometimes for convenience and also for something to look nice as well. So immediately uh, we've used black box to find that. And does it fall within our budget requirements? You know, if we've got a few thousand, then, then yes, this probably would. Now, search volume is a little bit different. So there is demand in this market because we can see, if I open up the, the Helium 10 X-ray Chrome extension, um, we can see that there's demand for the product because there's a lot of purchases. So this company here is doing 66,000. This one here, um, as a food catcher, there's another option maybe we could look at. Um, but there's a few sellers doing quite well. If we just go back to the main search term and we have a look at overall sellers. Again, we're just gonna have a little look. Now, the search volume isn't being pulled through. I don't think it's zero because the, uh, my hypothesis here is the title for a lot of these sellers are mat for under high chair or high chair mat, something similar. That means that that's an important search term, but for some reason Helium 10 isn't pulling through the search data, that'll probably get fixed. It's just a coincidence that we're looking at it right now and, it's, and you can't see anything. So I'm making an assumption at this point that there is search volume, but I would need to validate that later on once this is, uh, this is fixed, or I would find different search terms um, that end up coming to the same product. But there's definitely demand because people are doing you know, 90,000, 60,000, 106,000, 36,000. So um, earlier I talked about the opportunity ladder. Let's see if there's an opportunity ladder in this product. So one thing I will, will do for this is I'm just gonna organize by revenue to make this nice and easy. And um, if I had a little bit longer to do this, I would go through and I would just delete anything that's not the exact product. So we, with this particular product, uh, I'm pretty sure all of these are actually what we're looking for, but sometimes you'll, you'll search for products and there'll be different variations. One variation you wanna do, another variation, variation you don't. So you might wanna remove maybe some of those from the search results, which you can just click here and just, uh, just remove them basically, just press delete over here. So, I'd then be looking at the top sellers. So there's, I would say these sellers are that top of the ladder, okay? We then have, um, I would say there's like a middle of the pack from the 20, maybe 20, yeah, 25 to, to 60 grand or so, then they're the big middle of the pack. So if I was launching this product within the next year, I would be really focusing on getting to that 30 to $50,000 per month range with then targeting the 50 to 100,000 for the subsequent year after that. Um, and if I'm starting, I'm very, very fresh to it. I'd be looking at really naught to 20K as my initial you know, six months uh, to 12 months target is just getting up to that point consistently. Because look, I know that I could launch a product very successfully and do 50, 60 grand in the first month, but that might use all of my inventory and go out of stock. Oh, it would do definitely. Um, however, if you're doing, 
And instead of doing 4,000 sales from the get-go, probably very unlikely, you know, you could look at doing 500, 600, you know, 1,000 units per month. That's going to be a lot more affordable to start. It might be within your budget. And then you can estimate, right, we'll be doing 14 to 20K per month. Um, and then over a period of a few months, we can work towards doing orders where we're doing two, you know, getting enough for three months of um, 2,000 units per month. And then if we want to get into the, the big boys, right, we need to be ordering and getting 4,000 units sellable per month. If we want to be killing it, you know, we need to be up to 6,000, um, 6,500 units per month. So I would say that there's a good ladder here. We've got lots of people in the in the low range, so they're doing five to 10,000. We've got a good amount of people just getting started uh, within this like 20K mark. We've got a lot of people in the middle of the pack and there's a few people at the top of the ladder. So it shows us that there's, an, there's a way we can ascend. So I would say from that perspective, this looks like a good uh, opportunity in terms of uh, for the future. If we were to look at the reviews, we can see some have 1500 reviews, 700 reviews, 3000 reviews, 17 reviews. None of this really concerns me. Like this isn't a, a huge amount really. Um, I've competed with products with tens of thousands of reviews and still beat them because it's not about the number of reviews. If we go over sometimes, again, we can't see it for this particular product for whatever reason. Um, you can see here that some of them, you can see where they're launched. Basically, you're looking for people, if they're doing okay, and they launch like within the last year, two years, then I mean, that's pretty, that's a good sign that there's a good buoyant market that they can you can actually grow. Sometimes you'll find people, and I find this all the time, they launch like six months ago or within a year and they're, they're absolutely killing it. Um, so this is a good way where you can see that. Um, the other thing is you can look at the dimensions, the product dimensions, which is quite nice. So you can see, you can roughly work out the shipping and all that sort of good stuff from the dimensions of this. These are things just to note down for now. You're not gonna do a tremendous amount of depth into this right this very second, but it's good and useful for you to know. So we've kind of looked at the hero image. We've kind of looked at the carousel of images. Um, in terms of the price, let's just open up the Chrome extension again and just have a very quick look at the price. So if we have a look, there's like $17, $14, $15, $20 there. That's disposable ones. Uh, could be very interesting. I would definitely want to be looking at the disposable ones, uh, particularly to see if there's a subscribe and save option for this. Um, interestingly there's not so this this is a this is a real low-hanging fruit right here so this seller if for any reason you're this seller just implement this straight away if you're selling anything disposable or anything that's reusable you definitely should be having a subscribe and save option so that every so this is a 30 pack, right? Every month or every two months, then you would automatically have new ones delivered to you. You give it a quick discount for doing that. But what you wanna be able to do is have repeatable purchases. If you know every month you've got 100 units or 200 units on subscribe and save, that gives you leverage with your supplier because you can say, hey, look, we're ordering this much per month. Can we uh, have this amount set aside in the stock? We're gonna order this much over the next year. What's the price on that large stock order? But we're only gonna pay in these smaller increments. There's lots of negotiation techniques you can use uh, with subscribe and save. I have a friend that runs a multiple eight figure Amazon business and they only do products with subscribe and save options because they know that that's where the long-term value is, is getting subscribers to their products so they don't have to keep selling the product again and again and again and again. It's you sell it once and then people subscribe for multiple times. So if this was me, I would be looking at this option as well. All right, so we got sidetracked a little bit. I was looking at price. So there's a few, the $20 here, the price does concern me because it is quite low and I would think something of this size um, is gonna be a little bit more expensive. But there are a few things that I know that would be able to do to try and reduce the cost. So if I go over to size tier on the uh, Chrome extension, some say small standard size, some say large standard size. Now, the difference of these dimensions, if we have a look, this is 13, 11, uh, 0.71 by 8.82 inches. This is only marginally bigger, and that's put into the next uh, sizing, FBA sizing standard. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but that means that this person here is paying more in fulfillment fees and storage fees when potentially they could just they just need to make their packaging a little bit smaller, like not even that much, a tiny bit smaller, to get it to fall into the standard size, the small standard size. They're going to save some money there. So if we have a little look, 
but their fees, this one's $5.90, this one's $6.17. Again, that doesn't sound like much, but when you're timesing it by thousands of units, that means that this company right here, look, they have to charge a dollar more than this company, but they could be making the exact same amount of profit, but they have to charge more. From the customer's perspective, they don't care that you have to pay more for your shipping. They just care about the cheapest price sometimes. So that's something, if I was this seller, I'd be looking at you know, reducing the size of my packaging as much as possible. And maybe maybe they do, right? Because actually, look, it's the same company. Maybe it just has to be bigger. I haven't looked at the sizing requirements. Um, but certainly maybe these guys here, how can I get the product into a smaller uh, tier size? The price is something that we'll have to park until we actually source the product to find out the unit cost, to find out the profit margins. But again, these need to be essentially a few dollars landed per unit to, to make this successful. The next thing I'm gonna look at is the branding. Now, I don't really see any branding on any of these, um, maybe except for this company just here. Potentially, this is quite a hard one to brand on from a hero image perspective, but I don't think it's impossible. It could be a case that you show the product and then you have like the packaging in the product of how it actually turns up. So if that's rolled up and it has a sleeve around it, that's an opportunity where you could put branding on your hero image. Sometimes you could put the branding on the actual product, but for this product, that's definitely the wrong call to make. The branding here is mostly gonna be about the name. So we've got Splat Format, uh, maybe the company's Splat, maybe it's not. Blissful Diary, that's the name of that brand. Potentially like s and Inc, terrible, right? That's awful. Um, Theo's Mats, okay, it's okay, it's good. Obviously it's probably named after someone's child. Um, yeah, there's there's not really a huge amount of branding in this this niche, uh, except for these guys here. So I think that potentially is an opportunity. We need a little bit more deep diving into that on to see how it's possible to stand out with your brand on your hero image. If it's not possible, then we can leverage it in our carousel of images. Uh, but at this point, we have to put a pin in it and then come back to it later. At this stage, do I think this product is incredible? I don't think it's incredible. I think there's definitely some concerns with it, particularly about the size and the branding opportunity. Um, I do think there's opportunity within the hero image, within the carousel of images. The price, uh, I think that's gonna be very, very tricky. I think subscribe and save is, is, if we can do biodegradable ones, I think subscribe and save is the way to go with that. Um, however, I do think that's going to be an issue. I potentially think it's going to be a bit of a price war. The only way I see overcoming that at this moment in time is having a design that looks a little bit more aesthetic. Um, again, we would need to do some testing first. Branding we've just discussed. And then the product itself, um, again, this, this biodegradable, reusable option versus something that looks really nice and will be just there all the time. We need to do some research around that as well. And if I'm looking at my checklist here, and if you're looking at this in front of you, you can see that I've just kind of dipped around from demand to opportunity, back to demand to search volume, back to opportunity. And I'm going between these things quite often. That's because this is how it works in real life. You don't only look for demand and then only look for hero image opportunity and then only do this. Once you get into the flow of this and you've done it a few times, this all happens at the same time. Now, if I go back to my checklist, we haven't done the best seller strategy. I will show you that in a second. And we haven't done the seller store, store strategy. Does it fall within our requirements? Yes, search volumes, um, we haven't identified that, but I believe the answer to be yes. With trends and seasonality, I think it's pretty clear for this sort of product that it's, it's not gonna be a trending product and it's not gonna be a, a particularly seasonal product. Um, people have babies every day of the year and there's not necessarily one particular time that's gonna be more popular than other. others. Maybe over Christmas, people might get things as gifts, but um, you know it falls within that sort of price range of a giftable product, but it's not something that at this moment I'd be concerned about. If say, for example, it was a handheld fan, then I would be looking into the seasonality and the trends using trends.google.com. The question that I put on this document is, are there any reasons to disqualify? Are there any obvious reasons to disqualify? There's nothing obvious at this point. There are are some flags that we need to look at, like with the pricing, like with the sizing and the branding opportunity. We do need to look into that, but there's no big reasons to disqualify at this moment. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go over to Product Pinion. Now, this is a tool that I've been using over the past few months, um, and it's been an absolute game changer. Everything I'm about to show you, I was doing manually before, and oh my God, I absolutely love, this is my new favorite piece of software 
ever. And the co-founders, Matt and Andre, incredibly nice guys. They've been super helpful, helping me get the most out of this uh, piece of software. And they're even in our school community, our free Amazon seller community, as subject matter experts on conversion rate optimization and obviously um, their tool. So what I'm gonna do, there's two things that we can do. First of all, a poll and a video. Then I'm gonna do both of these for you. And I'm gonna do both of these right now, show you how they actually work, and then we'll come back to the results once we get them. So we're gonna go do a new test. And there's a few different options. You might've heard of things like PickFu that do a split test. This is just like way, way better. We're gonna do something called search simulation. So we're just gonna use their template category product name. Uh, it's gonna be a mat for high chair. And this is just for internal organization. So what is gonna happen? They're gonna poll people, so 50 or 100 people, depending on how many we choose, and they're gonna ask them, pretend you're browsing on amazon.com, which product would you most likely buy and why? And then we can actually create an emulated Amazon search page with the information that we want and then get the poll results. So um, I'm just gonna put in the data for this. So I'm gonna choose United States. We can choose United Kingdom or whatever, but I'm just gonna use the States for now. If we go over, what I want to do is I'm gonna take the top sellers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is press customize. Sorry, the, so the first thing I'm gonna do is press filters and I'm just gonna hide the sponsored product because I just, I wanna see it in order of organic search results. I'm gonna press copy over the, on the ASIN and I'm gonna go and paste it in here uh, just with the space in between and there you go, ASIN copied. And I'm just gonna do this for seven. So I'm gonna do that now. Now that I've got seven ASINs in there, I can actually add one more. So I'm gonna add one more. There we go, I'm gonna press grab data from eight ASINs. Now what they're gonna do is get all of that data from Amazon, the image, the title, the offer, the reviews, and it's gonna pull them into product opinion. So as you can see here, it's now pulled that data through. So you, you can see the image, you can see the titles, you can see absolutely everything. There's that uh, disposable one that I wanna test. And what I can do here is I can press preview page and that's gonna preview this search simulation <laughs> of Amazon, but this is not Amazon, this is a simulation, okay? I can also choose to do this on mobile as well. So if I click mobile and press preview page, that's what it's gonna look like. Now I'm just gonna do this for now, I'm gonna do it on desktop um, so I can try and get um, some results. But if I was to actually do this product and I'm concepting the idea, before I order the products, I would do tests uh, on mobile and desktop to see if there's any difference in the results as well, okay? So now that I'm happy with this, if I wanted to, I could change all of the prices to 14.99 so that everything's the same price. I'm not gonna do that. I wanna see what people are clicking and why um, at this stage. So I'm gonna go down to press next. Um, I'm not gonna have four people, I'm gonna have 100 people answer this. So it's gonna be sent out to 100 people, 100 uh, polling options. Um, in terms of the age uh, and all that sort of stuff, I'm just gonna leave this blank at the, this moment in time because I need to gather the data. I don't wanna say only look at people that are 30 plus because there might be people in their 20s that have kids and are buying these products. So I just want to know this information. So I'm not gonna limit this. Um, I can do advanced demographics if I want to. Um, so like relationship status, maybe we look for just married people. I don't know at this moment in time, again, I just want to grab the information. The other thing that we could do is if we were doing this test for a second, third, fourth, fifth time, I would exclude participants from the previous polls that I've completed. So I'm not asking the same people um, a question that could potentially provide a conflict, okay? So I always want new people each time. Cool, next. That gives a little overview and I press submit. What is gonna happen now is product opinion is gonna go out to their list of polling people and they will send them that search simulated page and ask them the question which um, I asked them. We'll then be able to see the results as they come down here. So this is, might take half an hour, an hour or so. Uh, so I'm gonna come back to this in a little bit of time. While we do that, we're gonna go on to videos. So videos is um, similar, not quite the same. We can do a mock-up. Um, just like we've done before, we can add the ASINs in on the ones that we want, but I'm just gonna send them to a URL. So what I'm gonna do 
is just go back to this page, mat for high chair. Uh, let's go for under high chair, just so it's clear. I'm gonna grab the URL and I'm just um, going to, how many, mat, oh, not that, for under high chair. I'm just gonna press next. And then I'm gonna put in that URL. We can create a custom one if we want to. We press test link, it opens up the link just so you can check that it's uh, that it's working okay. And then it asks three questions. What products are on the search page would you most likely click into and why? Uh, click into the top three listings and what did you like, what could be improved? And then for this category of products, what are the most important features and benefits? Now, not everyone gets around to answering all of these questions, but what we really want to know is which one of the search results would you click on and why? And this is going to record their screen and their video as they do this. So I'm going to get <clears throat> 25 people to do this. Uh, again, we're going to keep the demographics open in exactly the same way. And I'm just going to press submit. Okay. So now that has started. Again, we're going to have to wait for the results. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, while we're waiting, I'm going to go ahead and talk about some of the other ways to identify demand. So to find this product, we just literally use black box and I clicked on the, like, the second thing that came up. Now, the problem here is that if you look at my criteria, it was baby products, price and monthly revenue really not much information. The amount of people that will be finding this exact same product is quite large. They're not all gonna find the same opportunity as you, but this is the problem sometimes using black box is that you either pick something kind of quite quickly or you just scroll for hours and days and months and weeks and you never find anything. So let's look at maybe a, a different way of searching. This is something that I personally like to do because I don't know, it just feels more interesting. I go through to the Amazon bestsellers and just literally look. I mean, it's, it's nothing crazy. I'm just looking. And what I am looking for is products that could be um, easily private labeled. So for example, these collagen masks, probably quite easy to do. I would stay away from clothing just for the return rates and the amount of SKUs that you need. Can't do Apple AirPods. And um, so rather than go through the overall bestsellers, I'm going to go into a category. So for example, let's go with... Um, Tools and home improvement, okay? So this is showing the best sellers in tools and home improvement. I can go into a subcategory and again, could absolutely do that. There's no harm in doing so. And I'm just gonna look at the products. So there's a filter, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, lighting strips, maybe. I just, I mean, I'm not really pulled to them that much. Uh, refrigerator filter, no, not gonna do that. Filter, no, not gonna do a filter, filter. Maybe you could do a filter. I'm just flippantly saying no, maybe you could do them. Uh, a ring doorbell, we can't do that. Painter's touch, we can't, I mean, I wouldn't personally do an aerosol. Um, look, under cabinet lights, pretty simple product, okay? So let's click through to that. 23-ish pounds, 23-ish dollars. So does that come in within our budget? We'd be able to get that for a few dollars per unit. Um, I could order, you know, two, three, 400 units. Uh, let's look at roughly how many these sell per month. So open up Chrome extension, go to X-Ray. Wait for that to load. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so these are quite popular, it seems. Uh, over a million per month. So it might be that this is just a crazy market, but under cabinet lights, we'll take the main search term. We'll just pop it in Amazon under all departments, just because I want to make sure they do have the right search term. As you can see there, it actually did come up with um, the search volume, I believe, under cabinet lights. So we'll let Helium 10 work that out. 18,000 searches uh, per month for that keyword. So this is, I'd say that's that's a lot, right? That's a, that's a good amount. Uh, it's not crazy like LED lights for bedroom, 594,000 per month. You, know, you never know, these could be this, the same product. Um, but anyway, let's have a look. So immediately, if I'm going back to the identifying the opportunity checklist, I'm, I'm starting with the hero images. Immediately, I'm seeing, well, product facing left, 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 uh, lots of products. So I can see that there's six included here. It's a six pack. This looks like a five pack. It's got a, a remote control. Um, I'm looking at the blue at the background here. Again, the way this is, I mean, I wouldn't do that personally, but these are at an angle. So this is a little bit more varied than the first um, option that we looked at, but certainly there's, the 
the the packaging being included i think could be quite good and the other thing is if i look at this one led battery operated two pack magnetic dimmable do these have a remote control it doesn't look like mm, i can't clearly see if they've got a remote control so if they do then they need to make it more clear clear um but but if i was buying this i would probably want a remote control if i'm honest so if they're under cabinet somewhere you know i want to just quickly pick up the remote and and turn it on from wherever i am or like with hue lights you can stick the little things on the wall so that when you walk into a room you can click it i would personally want something like that but that's just a personal preference However, what we what we can do here is we can then use the second strategy. So first of all, let's just make sure that there's enough sales and demand. Uh, I, can, I can pretty much say the answer is yes. By knowing that there's 18,000 searches, I know there's going to be a lot of money in this market. Yeah, this seller doing 80,000, 60,000, uh, 1 million a month, 680,000 a month, 128,000 a month. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, let's look for any new sellers. January 2024, uh, they are doing 8,000. Um, let's look at July 2024. Uh, nothing yet. Uh, let's go look at the end of 2023. So if we've got mid 2023. Okay, so that's just over a year ago. They're doing 88,000. I mean, they've been selling this product for, okay, it's Black & Decker. So I, I, this, is, this is how product research works. I looked at one thing. I looked at the price. I didn't even look at the brand at this point. Black & Decker are a massive brand. So potentially they're getting a lot of residual sales from other parts of their business so i would actually discount that data so although that that launched uh, just over a year ago i would just i would ignore it because they're black and decker right these ones here easy valo or yiger or a v viva or easy like these just brand names don't even they don't mean anything right uh, get in light none of these stand out as being like a cool a cool interesting home brand uh, or even an electronics brand they just they all look like nonsense so when we're thinking about branding opportunity immediately i'm thinking you know uh, a, a good brand name would make a difference here interesting that this is a small standard size product and these are large standard uh, maybe there's not much in it potentially these could be slightly different products so uh, let's have a little look Maybe it's just because that only has two bits and that's got three or maybe there's a six pack that um, this can be smaller because maybe the packaging is smaller, but definitely something to, to think about, okay? So at this moment in time, I've not seen a massive opportunity in this market. The hero images are quite varied. There's people with packaging already. If, if I was looking at this and none of them had packaging, then I would say that's an opportunity definitely. Uh, but it, it's a little bit trickier here. I think we would need to do some more, get some more data in to make a decision on this. In terms of the pricing, the pricing is quite varied. We're going from $20 up to $70. I think that's a good thing. Me personally, I wouldn't want the cheap rubbish options. I might spend a little bit more on something like this, but again, my opinion doesn't matter. We would need to actually look at the data on this, on what's happening. So the next thing we can do is use the other strategy of looking at the sellers that, that sell this product and see what else they sell. So we can go, who is this sold by? We can. I just pressed the wrong button. We can go to their storefront just by clicking on here and going here. And then we can see the other products that they sell. So they do these lights. They do that light, that light, a cable for the lights, and then these iron plates for cabinet lights. So they exclusively sell these lights and maybe some accessories or some replacement parts for these lights. And if we have a little look, how's this seller doing overall? You know, <laughs> they're, do they're doing a million a month. So. I mean, they're doing pretty well. What we'd be looking for is potentially a seller that are also selling other products. So we go through the same thing. So this is lighting. We can look at these filament bulbs. Um, we've got more ones here, Edison bulbs. This one's quite cool. Under cabinet lighting again. We've got more under cabinet lighting. They do lots of under cabinet lighting. Maybe there's these solar pool lights. So this is something I haven't come across. That could be an area of opportunity that we look into. Because what you might find is there's some brands out there where they have one product, maybe it's a lighting product, but they sell tons of other, maybe home and kitchen or sports and outdoors or other types of products within that same Amazon account. And it will all be listed here. So you can see what they're selling. That could give you a good idea about where to go. Initially, I can see that 
These have got four reviews. These ones have got 35 reviews. Maybe they're not so good, but this one potentially, they've got 686 reviews, which means that they've been selling long enough to get that many reviews. I might potentially look at that one and just see if they're, they're doing all right with it. Have a very quick look using the X-ray extension. When deep diving into this, uh, looking at the solar lights, you can see there's no revenue really in these. So at that point, I'll just swipe back and try something else. Now, earlier, we did a poll for this product, the under the high chair mats, and I'm starting to get a lot of those results in. It's not complete, but I wanted to show you what I've been working on while I was waiting for the camera battery to charge. So here are the results coming in so far. It's, it's only 50% complete. So out of 100 results, we've got uh, 49. And as you can see here, um, a lot of people are choosing these options. So option G and option E, right? So we've got 13 votes for this one, 12 votes for that one, 25-ish percent each. And if we go down and look at the reasons why, I decided to choose this product because of the reviews and the price. Bolder and brighter pattern. Um, both a high chair, blah, blah, blah. The, the, this looks like good, the, whereas the others look like poor Photoshop jobs. I like the rainbows. Um, I like the wooden chair and how it looks paired with this picture. Um, we've got the more ones design looks most appealing. So a lot of people are referencing the design and how it looks. So this is the first bit of feedback I'm getting. Whereas personally, I like something maybe without all the de designs, which is exactly why my opinion means absolute nothing. It, it means nothing. My opinion doesn't matter equally. Your opinion doesn't matter either. It only matters at scale, people's opinions. Now, if we look at the videos, we're starting to get some of the video responses back. So let's check out these because this is this is really interesting. So what we're going to actually see is I'm not sure if you can hear this. But as people are talking, it's recording their screen and their decision making. OK, so I'm not going to show this whole thing, but what I started to do was as these results are coming in, I started to note down the common themes. Now, the analysis does this for you, but I like to personally kind of listen and hear what people say. Um, and this is what I picked up from this. The product needs to be easy to clean. Um, it needs to be packed and be able to be rolled up. You want potentially a two pack um, for the washing, but actually, so this is really interesting. This is what people said. Oh, I like the idea of a two pack, but hardly anyone actually chose the two pack as the good idea. Um, people always wanted the singular one of their own with a with a design. So although that sounds like a cool idea, it's, it's actually not the one that made a difference. What you could do is a two pack with a nice design. I think that's something certainly worth testing, but find the design first. So this is what I've tried to do. Find a cool design idea, and then we could then test the two pack because I reckon the price has to be around $15. Judging at the looking at the results, $15 seems to be the price point. Um, needs to be anti-slip, needs to be waterproof. You need to show these somehow uh, as much as possible. Showing the pro product close up, question mark. Maybe that could be an option for the hero image. Everyone's having them quite far out. Maybe you have it close up, folded up potentially. Uh, show the reverse side for the non-slip element. Quite a few people picked up. Oh, I like that it's got this non-slip factor to it. People like patterns, um, definitely. So here's my initial thoughts. Two pack could be, I keep thinking <laughs> about, you know, two pack. Um, you could have a two pack option, but I wouldn't do it plain because just not enough people are choosing that option. I would definitely want to test that going forward um, with a nice cute design for the, for the babies, show the non-slip, definitely within the lifestyle images. I tell you what, what I'll do is um, in our free school community, I'll do a reference to this video with all of the tools and resources I use, and I will put, uh, I will export this. So I will uh, share the results. I will be able, I'll export this so you can go and check it out for yourself and you can watch these videos, okay? Um, showing it being put into the washing machine, showing the water beading off of it. Um, oh yeah, oh, sorry, what I was coming back to is lifestyle images. So many people referenced the fact that they don't like the photoshopped look. So it's really important with the images that you get real lifestyle images for this product because people want to see it like 
on the right size in someone's kitchen being cleaned up in real life not some photoshop job and this is a really easy way to stand out with this one now this is interesting a few people mentioned this the light color if it's a dark color it's harder to see the spill and absolutely i, I completely completely agree with this if something is a lighter color it's easy to see the dirt and there's two lines two trains of thought do you want something that clean that masks up the dirt or do you want something that is easy to see so you can clean it. Again, this is my personal preference. I think it's better to be able to see it so it can be cleaned, but the data also says that that could be the case as well. People like the designs, um, they do like the dark designs, but people do also reference having the lighter one to be better for cleanup. So what you could do on your imagery on Amazon is if you have a light option, then you show it versus a dark option with the same sorts of spillage. So you would buy a competitor product, right? And you could buy one the competitor that's doing well here, have that with like some blueberries on it, some strawberries, um, some like chips and stuff like that all smushed in. And you have the exact same picture with the different products, your product on the right hand side and you can see clearly which one's easier to clean that's a nice visual way to show easy to clean like easy to see what's dirty hard to see what's dirty right you could do like a spot the difference i think that that could be a really good way of, of like showing rather than telling anyway in the kind of I don't know, half an hour, 40 minutes that the camera's been off. I had a chocolate dessert, but I, look, one of these ones, I had, I had a goo pot whilst I also went through this and I created what I thought would be a good hero image. So this is where we're moving on to the product concepting. I, I have an idea now from the research that I'm getting back, even though I haven't got all of the results, I'm starting to see themes basically. So at this point, I'm going for it. I've got enough, enough indicators to move forward. So the first thing I'm gonna do is think, well, what do I want? I thought it would be a good idea to do like a woodland themed one because there's not really many that you can see there. You could use light colors because like woodland, greens, browns, you know, that, those sorts of colors. Uh, and you can do them quite light. You can use pastel colors and it's quite whimsical. It's quite nice it's, and it's cute, importantly, it's, it's quite cute. I can see that being in my nursery. In fact, my nursery is woodland themed, so I can definitely see it in my nursery and let me show you what I came up with and I'm going to explain how I did it as well so this is what I came up with now I've the first thing I did is I wanted to find a higher quality high chair so if we look um at this for example let's just stick this to the top this was one of the examples of the products that is already selling now if you notice the, the perspective is a little bit off and it's going uh, like down a bit on the high chair. Most of the sellers are using this exact high chair with this exact perspective. So I thought, okay, we need to do something a little bit different. So I flipped it the other way around, literally just mirrored it, but I managed to find a higher quality version of this on Google from a different perspective. Perfect, no one's using this perspective exactly. It's the same high chair, it looks a bit different. So I thought I'd use this one instead. So that's the first thing. I wanted to stand out with the high chair and I wanted to face it the opposite way. I would then run a test eventually. If this won and it beat everyone else, I'd run a test with having a baby in it as well. I then got a uh, design for my mat. Now, how did I get this design? This is really, really smart. I use something called Mid Journey and I'm gonna show you exactly what I did, okay? So if we go up, Here's where we started. So this is an AI tool where I can ask the AI to create an image for me. And this, this is the exact process that I went through. You can see that was 109 today. And guys, it is 139. So this was really not that long ago that I've done this. You can literally see the timestamps on this. And the timestamp up here, look, one, uh, uh, well, my screen won't record it properly. I'm not sure how I'm gonna show you this, but it's, anyway, it's 20 to two, okay? so. The first thing I said is I want a 2D design for a kid's mat, light pastel colors with a cute woodland theme, square dimensions. This is uh, the four options that it came up with. And what I decided to do is I liked option three. So I asked it to upscale option three and do uh, four variations of, uh, of version three. It then upscaled it and that's what came out. Really nice, I like it. And then here are the four variations. So these are the variations that I thought looked quite nice. Uh, I decided that I liked option one the best, so I asked it to upscale option one. And also at the same time, I asked it to zoom out on this one here, because I thought, do you know what? Maybe this is too big and everything's gonna be a bit large, so I want to have an option which has got um, more in it, basically. So uh, after upscaling one of those, basic upscaling means taking it from four separate images and making it into one image. So you can see here is the upscaled image of the bigger design. 
and we have the upscaled image of the design that I like as well. Um, then on both of these, these were basically my final options uh, for this testing period. I then decided to upscale them, which basically means make them higher quality so I can use them. So then it upscaled them and I had that one and it's exactly the same, it's just higher quality basically. And I downloaded these, that's it. So you can see the initial one was at like what, nine minutes past, yeah, nine, wherever it was, nine minutes past one and it took two minutes basically to be complete. And that was the option that I chose. Okay. so. I tested uh, the, let me just see if I can show you this. I tested the bigger one versus the uh, smaller one. And I thought, do you know what? Even though maybe the one with more in it might perform better and it might look better in real life, I thought for the image on Amazon, this might perform better. So this is the first one that I'm actually gonna test. And if for some reason this did, you know, if this did better than the competitors, I would then test the different design against that to see if which one performs better out of the two, okay? So I didn't do that. Anyway, I chose this one. I then added the fold over from the non-slip pattern. I literally just screen grabbed this from another seller. I changed the color on it and I moved it into the right position. I added a quick shadow on here. I put some shadows underneath the uh, the, the mat to make it look real. And that, that's literally it, okay? It really didn't take me that long at all. What I've then done is I've gone on to our poll that we've uh, that is still running actually and I've pressed launch similar up here and I've literally just pressed yep next and I've taken the option which was the worst performing which was this one here because I don't want I want to compare myself to against the people that are doing well and all I did is I go to edit I change this image So I changed the image, I changed the title just to put in the keywords that I want, and I changed the price as well to $14.99, but I kept the reviews at 40, 47 reviews, but I just changed this to 4.3 stars, right? So I'm not making it a five star product, I'm just changing it to 4.3 because that's like a magic area. I didn't add any coupons or anything like that and I just pressed saved. And I've already started that test, okay? For the element of time, I've just asked for 50 responses from uh, from this new test, and there's only 6% to complete. So there's, there's not enough data to actually show you just yet. But I'm hoping, my goal is that, that I can be maybe the third, fourth uh, best option there. If I can get anything above third, then this would be a, a really, really great win initially. If it comes in around fourth or third, then I know it will just take a little bit of tweaking to get it up to the prime position. Or maybe it's the case that the only reason people are choosing my product is maybe is the reviews, in which case I know that I can over time beat them by having a better product and having a better follow-up system for reviews. Um, but those things aren't too you know, tricky in the long term. And that's definitely part of the longer term strategy. Right now, I'm just trying to validate, can I get clicks? If this also does well, I'll be looking at pricing options. So for example, these sell roughly around $14.99. What if I make it $19.99, but with a $5 coupon? Does that perform better or worse because people are getting a deal? These are the sorts of things that you can test using Product Opinion and validate your hero image, your title, your price, and you know your offers before ever purchasing your product. You know I've done this all today. I started recording this video earlier today. As you can see, I started creating this hero image 40 minutes ago, and I've tested it right now, and I'll get the results hopefully within about I don't know, half an hour to an hour or so. So I'm gonna pop back, I'm gonna have a quick break and then uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, it's been a little bit of time. However, I've gotta go out for Sunday lunch with my family. So I've not got time to wait for the rest of these results to come in. I need to get this video out to you guys. I'm gonna end it a little bit early, but this is initial data. So if this shows positive signs, I'm gonna be doing more polls in the future anyway. So let's go ahead and see what we've got. What I'm looking to see is that our product is now uh, closer towards the top of the results. And I can look at some of the data as to why people selected that option. So that's what I'm looking to find. I'm gonna give it another refresh just before I scroll down. So uh, before we see the results, this is the moment of truth. Okay, so we still got 80%. Let's scroll down. <laughs> yes, that is exactly what I wanted to see. And this proves why this strategy is so bloody 
good. I swear sometimes my genius knows no limit and this is why <laughs> I will die on this hill as to why hero images are so incredibly important. But the key thing here is guys that I, I didn't do anything crazy. I just looked at the data from what people were saying on the previous poll. I used that with a bit of common sense and I created something first of all, very quickly. And I then ran another test to see the results. If this had terrible results, fine. I would have gone back to the drawing board. I would have done it again and tried to get better results. But just by using the information that the people have given me, I've created something which you can do exactly the same thing. It's now come out on top with 27.5% of the votes. Whereas previously, they, the top person getting most of the votes, I know it's a bigger data set, so it's a little bit different. We're getting 21.62%. So just by changing a few things, being able to get 26.8% of the votes. Now, I would like to do this with a bigger data set, but as I said, I've got Sunday lunch to go to, and that is really important. So what I'm going to do now is just look through some of the comments because I intentionally, let me look, let me show you the, um, what I actually did. So there's the, the, the image. I changed the title to little cubs. That was the brand name that I made in I don't know, five seconds, baby splat map for high, for, sorry, for under high chair. So the normal search term, 51 by 51 inch, woodland theme, because it's a woodland theme, water resistant is important, washable is important, anti-slip was important. And then at the end, and super cute. So I just thought, let's how, how do we make this a little bit more friendly and nice because it's for kids? It's super cute. I wanted to see what came out with that. Um, as you can see, the reviews, I kept to 47. So when people say, oh, we need to you know, have high sales and low competition because we can't compete with the people with loads of reviews, the second option had 3,000 reviews. The third option had 4,000 reviews. The fifth option, no, fourth option, I can't spell, say it. The fourth option, bloody hell, had 700 reviews. My option with 47 reviews and a 4.3 star rating. So it's not even better than the, this is 4.5, this one's 4.5, this one's 4. It's worse, worse rated than the other sellers. The price, okay, granted is cheaper. That is a plus point, but I was basing that off of the price of these guys here. It's average middle of the road and it's getting better results. This proves, this proves to you that this method fucking works. So let's look at the feedback. It looks the cutest. Hmm. I like the color and it stands out from the other options. Funny that. Uh, let's have a look at the other ones. It's such a cute and cozy design. Cute. Interesting that word keeps coming up. It has light colored rug and shows the product in a positive way. Perfect. That's what I was looking for. I like the pattern because it looks more modern. It has natural colors. Cool. Good. Uh, I like the price and I think the aesthetic is the best match for what I have in my house. I like the color combination the best. Others seems bland, bland, bland with bad combinations. I chose this because of the price and the cute pattern. It does not look generic. I prefer the little cubs map, which is my brand name, uh, for the high chair because the pattern is cute. It's funny, isn't it? I've put cute into the title and at the end of the title, super cute. And this is what people are pulling out. They're saying the word cute. I like the design. I also like how washable and eco-friendly. The animal theme for these splash mats are cute for a child in mind, right? <laughs> if I'm going for cute and I want this wholesome, lovely feeling, put the keyword in the title. Where I would go from this is I would then test these cute woodland themes. I would test maybe a ocean theme. I would test a, I don't know, space theme or maybe a farm theme, for example. And I would test which ones perform best on these results and then approach the suppliers with my design. In the future, if I know woodland, farm and ocean theme are the best ones, maybe those will be my three variations of my product. And then depending on those can add to that in the future. For example, you might go down mythical creatures like unicorns and stuff like that. Now, here's the really interesting bit. This is now the top selected option. If we were to look at how this would affect your sales on Amazon, if I know that I could run advertising and I'm more often than not, 26% of the time, gonna, people are gonna choose my listing over and above the competition that are outranking you. They've got more reviews. They might have a better price. They might have a better offer. They've got better everything, right? Let's look at the sales on Amazon. So we're going back to the demand, right? 
That top seller that won the previous poll, the base level poll, they're doing $62,000 per month. I've just been able to out click them with a few simple changes. So whilst I won't be doing 66,000 per month straight away because they're gonna be ranked for multiple search terms, I can start to take attention away from their listing. I can take customers from them and send them to me and I can have their money instead. Now, interestingly, I'm not done just yet. And what I'd be doing off the back of this is looking at the feedback that I've got. So for example, of these ones, they like the pattern, um, it looks affordable, won't show the dirt. So some people do like the dark design. So I would then create a dark design option to see if that performs better than my light design option. And also as we were scrolling, I saw in here a few times that people still pull out the fact that it's um, like non-slip. And it's because they do this, they have this non-slip button. Now that's not TOS compliant, so I wouldn't necessarily do it, but I wanna see if it makes a difference. So I would run another test and on my image, I would put non-slip um, bottom or whatever it, non-slip bottom, and just see if it makes a difference. Because look, at the end of the day, I know it's not, compliant with term image terms of service, but hell, if I can do it, I can get a higher click-through rate. And if for any reason, Amazon come and suppress the listing, I have the TOS compliant version ready to go. And I may be out for like an hour on my sales, but I can quickly upload the new image and it should be absolutely fine. People are doing it, they're getting away with it. I know you shouldn't do it. And obviously pinch of salt with everything I'm saying, but at the end of the day, this is how it actually works. If the results were way better and I tested it and the results came back about 10% better, 20% better, then potentially I would do that because I want the money. You have to always make sure you have the TOS compliant one ready to go because if they suppress you, then obviously you're not making any sales whatsoever. The other alternative, which I'd also test is having the product kind of here all wrapped up. If it's gonna be folded or if it's gonna be a like a rolled up design with a product wrapping on it or any sorts, I would then have the words non-slip on that instead because that would be compliant because if that's actually how it comes, like produced, then you could just put the keywords on that instead and put that in the hero image. Equally looking at this, I'd have to look into the exact terms of service for rugs um, to see if you can even have the high chair in there. It might be a case that the high chair being in this image is non-TOS compliant. I'm not familiar with like the rug category, um, but it's something that I would check. And again, I would have the backup without the high chair just in case I ever needed it. Pretty cool, huh? Happy with that. I would also test the title. I would test offers, like putting a 20 pound price with a uh, fifth, with a five dollar coupon. I would test different badges like climate friendly badge and all sorts of other things. And essentially as much as possible so that I can drive my percentage as high as I can in this testing phase before I've even spent any money on the product. Happy with that. Now I did say that we would cover the boring stuff, the due diligence near the end. This is very important and potentially maybe this is another video in itself because the product that we've done today is actually is, is not that complicated and finding the compliance regulations for it and the safety stuff will be actually quite easy because it's a fairly basic product. But where you may need a little bit extra help, for example, if you were doing like a red light therapy mask, then I would recommend doing something like this because that's electronic, that's maybe a medical equipment, uh, it might have batteries, it might have a plug. There's a lot more compliance um, potential for that product. Or if you're doing a supplement, there's definitely more testing required within that field. So where you can start this process is firstly looking on alibaba.com at the manufacturers. And once you scroll down on the page, sometimes you'll see what uh, certificates and compliance they already have for the products. And you could just literally click on them and research what the hell they are. Cause you might not know some of the terminology at this moment in time, but you can certainly learn about it. So just having an awareness of what people are currently doing is a good good first call. Then you can buy products from your competitors or even try to find the user manuals online. For example, I was looking at a red light therapy mask recently and rather than kind of go down the rabbit hole of trying to find all the compliance myself, I found a competitor's user guide online and I just read it. And it said in there all of the different directors that the products was compliant with, all the different certificates and everything that I potentially needed to know. I'm not saying I'm gonna rely on that 100%, but it's certainly given me a big leg up and a lot of research that someone else Else is completed and I can use it. However, of course, it's better to be safe than sorry. That's why I use this company just here. So it's this company called Kima and they essentially do everything related to compliance and testing of extremely high level. So if I was doing a product that is a little bit more complicated, maybe it is electronic or it's something that's digestible, 
ingestible, digestible, ingestible, uh, or maybe it's a topical, maybe it's a cream or something like that, then I would certainly go to an absolute expert in the field so that I'm doing my own due diligence. I'm personally not a compliance expert and I'm, I'm not gonna be claiming to be that. And I certainly, to be honest, I wouldn't even wanna be one. I'm gonna to go to the expert. So yes, that's gonna cost you, you know, a few hundred dollars or so, depending on the complexity of the product. But I promise you, if you don't do that and you find out six months later that you should have this particular certification that you do not have an Amazon on our requesting that you prove that you have it and you don't, that's gonna cause an issue that's way more expensive than two or $300. In the past, I've used people from Upwork, I've used product sourcing companies, but like anything, going to absolute experts in it is probably the best best bet. This isn't some sponsored thing, right? This is just a really good company to go to. You're gonna definitely want to look into intellectual property, particularly with something that has a function. A mat for under the high chair, it's a mat. There's not gonna be a pattern about that particular mat. I mean, there may be, but it's just very unlikely. However, of course, it's always worth checking. Certainly look into things like Google Patents, but the problem with Google Patents or looking at design rights or anything like that is it's extremely complicated and super hard to find the answer if you're not an expert in it. I've been doing this for years and I could potentially make a few mistakes there. I don't trust that myself will be able to do it to the standard that is required. So I don't think you should trust yourself either. Get an expert to do it for you. For the intellectual property, for patents and all that sort of stuff, again, just go on Upwork and hire someone to do it for you. They're going to do it far better than you ever could. It won't even cost you that much money and you're going to get something that you can trust off the back of it. You're going to know if something is safe or is not safe. And yes, this is adding to the cost of startup, but this is a real business and real business needs research. Ultimately, doing the intellectual property searches and the regulatory compliance searches yourself, although it will save you some money, sure, you run the risk of making quite a large mistake because one small thing that you miss at this stage could end up leading to quite a headache in the future. The last thing that you really want to think about at this stage is just the restrictions on Amazon. A lot of people say don't go into restricted categories or gated products. It's just nonsense. The sentiment among sellers at the moment is the harder the better. If you have a hurdle to get over, then that's something that most beginners won't do. So you're going to be beating them before they've even started. The best way to do this is not go and search for it and try and find out if it's restricted by going on Google or going on Amazon even. It's actually listing the product. So go onto GS1, get yourself some barcodes and create a dummy listing, like actually create it. Create a dummy shipping plan. So you're pretending that you're sending units into Amazon. If there's a restriction or a, a gated category or anything, you will know at that point. They will not let you send in inventory into Amazon if you haven't got the requirements or the compliance to do so. In terms of the cost of that, it's fairly cheap because all you need is a barcode from GS1. In terms of the cost to do that, you can use your own barcode from GS1, but actually more recently, Amazon have allowed you to list as a generic generic product. So for this stage of just testing to see if something's okay, you don't even need to buy a barcode anymore. The things that you do want to do is just make sure that any keywords that are really important, for example, if you're selling a toy, you need to make sure toy is in the title because there'll be a different level of compliance because you're using the word toy. If it's electronic or it has batteries or if it's sharp, then all of those keywords you want to put into the title in the listing at this initial stage. What you're trying to do is get Amazon to flag up any issues at this point. So you can go and research it. You can go and get the compliance. You go get the certification. You ask the supplier before you've ever spent any money on the products. Today, we have calculated a budget for our Amazon product. We've identified a product with demand, quite easily, I must add. We've identified an opportunity for that product and we've tested and proven that is the case. The reason why I absolutely love this research strategy and the reason why it's so successful is you can do it very quickly. There's people that are searching weeks and months for products and they're never able to find it using the same strategy that we found our product with, but they're never able to do the extra stuff. If you follow this strategy that I have done today in front of your eyes, I have found a product with demand quite easily, I must add. We've created a product concept and we've even tested that concept to see if it will actually work on Amazon. This has been done within one day and I've been recording the whole process for you, so it's taken even longer than it usually does.
does. Today has been a prime example of once you have the right strategy and process to follow, finding a product can be easy and it can be fast. If you found this video valuable, then please give it a like, give it a comment, and of course, subscribe with your notifications turned on. I've mentioned lots of times in this video about our free school community where you can get all of these SOPs, cheat sheets, documents that I've mentioned in this video, along with training and access to our $1 billion Amazon selling network. It's completely free to join and the link is down in the description. My name is Johnny Bradley and remember, you're just one product away. Bye-bye.